when this was going on in Asia, particularly in China, two, three months ago, well, it was going on well before that, but when they finally let the world in on this two, three months ago, it just wasn't on really anybody's radar, right? We barely talked about it on this show. It wasn't really in anybody's headlines. If we reacted to every time there was a plague going on in Asia, you know, where, where you know, they have live wet markets to attract ticks uh, by the legion, we wouldn't, you know, if we were attracted to every bug story, virus story out of that part of the world, we'd never talk about anything else, right? Correct. So it it it's when we started seeing the pictures and the videos and reading the stories from where that all of the West, including the United States, stood up and took attention from where? Italy. Italy. Italy is the country that that sparked, whether you think it's panic, whether you think it's um, appropriate concern, however you would describe it, Italy is the country that that set in motion all of the events we have experienced as Americans over the last couple of weeks. And over the weekend, Italy's uh, National Institute of Health admitted that the data that it has shared, now again, I, I have to keep making this distinction because I keep being flooded with people that are incapable of making the distinction. This isn't about the existence of coronavirus or whether it's a hoax or people have died. We're not, we're not doubting any of that. What we're, what we're asking is whether the cure is, worth, is worse than the disease. The, the draconian measures that have been taken to, to stop this in its tracks and over the weekend, Italy admitted to the London Daily Telegraph that essentially its data is wholly unreliable. That's, that's the data that has been used to galvanize everything that we have been asked to sacrifice, put on hold, erase, eliminate, pay for in the last couple of weeks. And I want to walk you through this story. All right. So it is impossible to underestimate Italy's role in Western nations like the United States shutting themselves down, for it is highly unlikely that we would be shut down right now if it were not for what we saw coming out of Italy. Is that a fair point? Oh, more than fair. It's crucial. And, and, and maybe even if you want to say less likely, highly unlikely, but at, the, at some level, it is less likely we would be shut down right now if it weren't for what we were seeing out of Italy, which brings us to our next point. All right. Remember, Italy was the focus of our media's hysteria three weeks ago. After all, we heard things like, if this could happen in Italy, what makes you think it couldn't happen here? That was the mantra, right? Italy is a modern Western European democracy, and it was supposedly burning bodies and deciding who lives and who dies because of this plague. Those stories and claims are the primary reason we are where we are today in America with coronavirus. I'm not saying those things never happened or were overblown, but that now we have an entirely different context to them. It never made sense to me. It just never did. Why a modern Western nation of 60.2 million people was brought to its knees because a few thousand more people needed an ICU bed. And I have said this many times in many formats, including it right here on the blaze. We may now have our answer. Italy is simply an incompetent democracy of cosmic proportions. At the very least, it has totally cooked its books by its own admission. By admitting that anyone who essentially died the past few weeks while testing positive for COVID-19 was counted as a coronavirus death, we were all fed a very biased sample. Especially when you consider Italy says the average age of hospitalization for COVID-19 was 67 years old. How many 67-year-olds are free of any pre-existing conditions? Answer. Not many. Not many anywhere in the world, in fact. So Italy essentially said if you had a serious staph infection, pneumonia, or were previously diagnosed with emphysema or lung cancer in a high smoking population, or anything else that weakens immune systems and can kill you on its own, that's an important point, can kill you on its own, you were counted as having been killed from coronavirus if after the fact you tested positive for COVID-19. In other words, I've been to the hospital a million, dozens of times for emphysema. I go back now because now it's really, really bad because I've got this virus and I die. That, they counted that death as solely as a result of COVID-19. This is their own admission. 
Now, maybe they're lying about that too. I don't know. But this is what they admitted to the London Daily Telegraph over the weekend. Let me give you an analogy. Suppose I wanted to find out, and I'll use, uh, you know, I'm of an Italian ancestry. So suppose we wanted to find out how many Italian Americans there really were. And we took a census, okay? And we instructed the people in that census. Hey, as you go through, we gave them a genealogy kit so they could test their own genealogy. And if at any point in time, at any point in time, there is any Italian in your ancestry, could be intermarriage, so it wasn't by blood, but it was in her marriage and that marriage lasted for 10 minutes and it was annulled, it was never consummated and it was 400 years ago. If there's any, if it pops up at all, you do a keyword search at all, Italian, in your genealogy, we are going to count you as full-fledged Italian-American. Now, is that a fully accurate sample? No. No, it's, it's, it's a weighted sample and maybe even biased sample. Because ultimately you end up with something called confirmation bias. You were looking to see how many Italian Americans there were. You then told everybody, anybody with any Italian in your genealogy at all, count it as full-fledged Italian. And then lo and behold, you came back and your study showed there's a, there's a, we've never had this many Italian Americans before because there's no context to it. Just any time the keyword Italian showed up, you put it in your genealogy. Italy admitted to the London Daily Telegraph over the weekend. This is essentially what it did with coronavirus. If you had any other pre-existing condition, it didn't matter. No matter how terrible it was, how potentially fatal it was on its own, you were counted, if you died and tested positive for coronavirus, you were counted as having been killed by COVID-19. Let's continue. This exploded Italy's mortality rate from COVID-19 way ahead of the whole world, except for China. Now, I wouldn't advise anybody trust China's data, all right? but right now, <coughs> officially, Italy has the highest death count in the world, higher than China. I don't believe that for a second, and I would advise you don't either. Okay, so we're not even looking at China's data. I'm not even I, in, in all the research I've done over the last couple of weeks. I've not looked. I'm, I'm not even counting China's data in anything. I'm not. Now, even with this skewed statistical sample, meaning that they overly weighted their sample. Looking for Italian Americans in, in my analogy, or they're overly weighting looking for COVID-19. So they're so they're they're counting everything as it. And yet, even with that heavily weighted sample. Through Friday, Italy was reporting, and I only counted Friday because Saturday was when this revelation came out. Through Friday, Italy was reporting only 0. .00007, that's four zeros. Only 0. .00007 of its population was killed by coronavirus, which is 8.6% of those who tested positive had died, a stark number, but still below the 10% number that was floated here a couple of weeks ago that made us all panic. But now, with just 12% of its deaths, that's their number, that's their number now, just 12% of their, their deaths from coronavirus being singularly the cause, meaning a singular exposure to coronavirus, you had no other pre-existing condition that should have led to your fatality, but you were singularly exposed to COVID-19, only 12% of those deaths through Friday were the case, which means 484 Italians who were otherwise healthy were actually killed by COVID-19. That means only 1.02% of those who were healthy and got the virus died. Even at that advanced age set, where the average hospitalization was 67. This is 0. .00000, that's five zeros, 0. .000008 of Italy's entire population. And that assumes Italy can now count, and I'm using data through Friday, as I said, because this revelation was reported on Saturday afternoon. Would we have shut our nation down if we were given this data from the beginning? We may never truly know, but any amount of common sense would at the very least make it somewhat less likely. We might have at least hesitated. We might have said, well, let's, let's, let this, let's see where we're at first before we, we, we saddle the country with minus 24% economic growth in the second quarter, according to Morgan Stanley this morning. That's their forecast for their investors. Negative 24%. Let's continue. After all, remember, there were no calls for shutting us down because of what was happening in China, the epicenter, two to three months ago. 
Italy, a nation of our ancestors, like my own, and a member of the European Union, being brought down to its knees by this virus, that is what galvanized our hysteria or preparation, if you prefer that description. Also, at the very least, we might have mobilized a far different response, similar to what Japan and South Korea did. Two nations with far more experience being exposed to Chinese plagues than we have. They kept mostly open societies and didn't destroy their economies while isolating the small number of sick and vulnerable. Japan has yet to see a, cor a, a coronavirus spike, while South Korea is scheduled to resume even more public life like professional sporting events at the end of this month. Here's the bottom line. The economic, societal, and personal cost to each American from the panic induced by the overreaction to Italy is absolutely astronomical. Astronomical.